Hi, this is Felix Badgeboss. And I'm Luke Lango. And you're watching the 3F Project Update. So, let's start off with the first, uh, with the first question, okay? Um, so, Luke, you have uh, actually mentioned that you have been trying to gain weight, you've been eating a lot of food. Can you tell us what are the things that you've been trying? Okay, so essentially I've been going out of my way to eat anything and everything I can. So I'm talking like massive amounts of calories from like really unhealthy sources. So for example, just like yesterday, I had a whole large box of pizza just to myself. And I'm talking like, um, I had a beef pepperoni and the crust was like the extreme edge crust, where there's like cheese in the crust instead of just a regular plastic toss. On top of that, I had a, I had like a whole bag of twisty rolls, it's basically bread wrapped round. And um, I also had chicken, chicken, and uh, I drank a 1.5, well, I had half a bottle of Mountain Dew. So you had pizza, cheese crust, and you had 1.5 liter of Mountain Dew. In one sitting. In one sitting. In one sitting. Yeah. And, and that's not the only kind of meal that you have. Uh, I, I heard that you have a uh, three chili pami at a go, and, yeah. and you are losing weight. Uh, yeah, that's that's a bit. Uh, so of, I'm losing weight. So you're trying to gain. You're gonna try to gain fat, right? But instead of gaining fat, you're actually becoming leaner and more vascular. Yeah. Any yeah. any theories as to why this is happening? Um, well, I think that on top of my frequency of my training of going down, I think that. Prior to, to doing this phase, I was relatively on a slight deficit, actually uh, about a, a caloric deficit before I started this whole phase. And I think just introducing that like, huge amount of carbohydrates into my, my, my meals have just basically uh, ramped up my metabolism and sent it like overdrive. overdrive. So I've been starting to like, burn a lot more. Um, Although I train lesser, but my intensity for each session has gone up. So I think yeah, that combining all these factors into account, I think that's what's making me lose my weight. Kind of how, kind of like how competitive bodybuilders, you know, after they finish their cutting season and they go off, they get off stage and they start to eat, but instead of instead of gaining fat immediately, they sort of get more. Yes, yes, I would think that that would be the case. Uh, but I also think that uh, it won't last for. Yeah. I mean, eventually I will pack on a lot of weight because if you follow the principles of calories in, calories out, if you're in a calorie surplus for a long time, you will gain weight. I notice your lips are a bit dry today. Uh, yeah, uh, actually that reason is because I'm currently on some medication for my uh, acne. Oh, my face. Okay, cool. So, so it's so actually prescribed by the doctor. Right, so it's got nothing to do with the increased heart. Uh, no, no. If anything, I'm definitely consuming more water now because I'm... Uh, I'm really thirsty. thirsty. Yeah, really thirsty. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and have all that salt, all that salt, sodium from the foods, and especially the pizza last night, I was just like drinking non stop. Did you know that for every one gram of uh, carb that you have, your body actually had to absorb four grams of water? I did not. Okay, so uh, if, if you have a very heavy carb intense, uh, it's not just caused by the sodium, it's actually caused by the increase in carbs. So it's excellent as well. Uh, sponge. Yeah. Okay. It expands mm -hmm. and it absorbs water. Okay, yeah, that's pretty interesting. interesting. So, um, so that is that is that. And um, how long do you think it will be before you start to pack on any fat? Uh, well, I think I like, give it a one more. I'll give it like, another week. Another, another week. Uh, yeah, give it another week because I'm gonna be. I'm currently on a break right now, so I my the, the food that I have access to is mainly majority of the time is home cooked food because I'm at home. Uh, but once I start my uni back again, my university, uh, I will, the, the amount of food I have access to will be obviously outside food. So, chak pan, economy rice. More unhealthy food. More unhealthy food, I would say, yeah. Great. Now you gotta compare to your mom saying your mom, your cooking is too, too healthy, really. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure she'll like hearing that. So, right now, uh, it, it's been one week. Yeah. How do you feel about this whole journey right now? Uh, well, it's definitely fun getting yeah. to eat whatever I like. Uh, having, like, I mean, it's fun, but at the same time, like, there's a part of me at the back of my head is going like, oh man, I'm gonna be so fat after this, and I'm feeling so guilty. 
I think it hasn't struck me yet because every time I look in the mirror, I'm still relatively lean. Um, but I, I believe that once I start like losing the definition, I start putting on lots of weight, uh, then it's going to be a challenge. I think the challenge starts from there. Right now, I'm just enjoying the, the festive season. It is Chinese New Year. So I'm enjoying the cookies, uh, I'm enjoying the pork, fried pork, baklava. <coughs> Go crazy! I'm enjoying everything. You know? I mean, I, I love I love the festive seasons, especially my favorite uh, season would be Christmas. That's that's the time of year where I truly enjoy the most with people. I, I love the food, I love the company, mm. and it's it's the time of year that I can really really relax. I mean, like throughout the whole year, because like juggling between comp competitions and studies and all that. Towards December, it's relatively quiet, so there's no competitions in December. There is no studies. There's, there's none of this, so I can really relax and unwind. Right. Cool. And um, we we met. I think I mentioned this to you before, but um, there are s several YouTubers who actually did this sort of um, fit to fat to fit journey before, uh, and and I've actually showed you those things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, how do you feel about those? And, and what do you think is uh, the uniqueness of what we are doing right now as opposed to what you're doing right now? I think what separates our project from there so our transformation is that we're actually documenting everything in the form of episodes. So from what I see uh, in most of the most of the videos that we saw on YouTube is that everything was combined into one. Well, it's definitely respectable what these people do. I mean, they, they actually go out of their way, they actually change their body and all that. Uh, I believe like there are very important parts that are left out when you when you don't like document each and everything you know like the, if you compress and combine everything into just one video it, it leaves out I believe it, it leaves out quite a bit of important details like I'm pretty sure some of the viewers want to know some parts of your journey that were not like, shown during your combination sorry combining your clips. Mm. Interesting because right now you are also doing lots of I see lots of uh, videos that you take while you're driving a car. Yes. You're working yes. out. Uh, and, and you've and you've been doing this for the past one week, haven't you? Yes. Uh, how do you feel about this whole YouTubing thing? Oh, it's definitely a challenge. It's it's uh, I have a newfound respect for video editors and uh, vloggers nowadays uh, because when I see how their video looks and how my video turns out, it's like. Shit. <laughs> really comparison is yeah, really good. The other side is uh, uh, looks so easy, it looks so simple. And then that's I uh, spent I spent the better half of my entire Saturday last week just learning how to use uh, the video editing software and Photoshop and, and it was it was a challenge, but I actually enjoyed the process of learning. You know, I, I think that it's a it's a useful skill to have. So it was definitely a challenge. It's it's still a challenge right now because I'm I'm new to all this, but I think it will be. It'll, it'll be fine if I just continue to put in the effort. It'll turn out right. Mm. So I hope the viewers will like what I'm going to show them, what we're going to show them. Yeah, I hope so too. Because I, which brings me to another question. When I first started videoing myself, I was scared shitless. Um, even, in fact, until today, I couldn't seem to be able to uh, speak as smoothly on the video as compared to off the video. Mm -hmm. uh, is the same thing happening to you? Um, I. For me personally, I've never really had the sense of stage fright. I would say because, uh, well, if you were to ask me to address like a large audience, about maybe three, four years back, then perhaps yes. But seeing as how I'm in the fitness industry and we coach uh, people in a group setting, I'm I'm very used to addressing large crowds, in, uh, large amounts of people in a, in a single setting. So I think that is really helped me with uh, overcoming my, uh, I would say, fears or whatnot. But in, the, in, a, in a group class setting, you actually get to interact with them, you get to ask questions and so on. Yeah. So what, what frightens me is that there's no one behind this camera right now until after we upload it. Well, I think what, what, I, what I would think about if I'm doing a vlog is that I what calms me down is knowing that despite there being not anybody behind the camera, I'm pretty sure some of the viewers already know you. And what I do is I just feel like I'm just talking to that person. Okay. So it, it makes me act normal. You know, like it's not I don't need to pretend like I'm somebody else. You know, I just need to feel like I'm interacting with that person and how I normally act on the 
interact on a normal basis, on a daily basis, and that basically just makes me go normal. Great, great. Yeah. On that, along that line, a lot of uh, stage fright, a lot of fear of being filmed actually stems from uh, fear of what people might think of you, would you agree? Yes, that's true. Right? Yes. So, like you get not good enough. Like never good enough to never good enough. please them. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? Like, I think it's a pretty common occurrence. Let's say we just go any video at all, any video at all, there's gonna be some trolls yeah. right yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. So, do you anticipate any trolls coming your way in the next few months? I think um, this is actually something that can be applied to everyone's life. Uh, you you can be the you can be the best uh, the best or the sweetest like apple in the world, right? And there's still somebody on the world in, in the planet is gonna hate apples. So I think that regardless of how you do it or why you do it, you just gotta do it. You know, uh, there's always gonna be someone that disagrees, and that's fine. They can disagree. There's always someone that's gonna troll you. There's always someone that's gonna talk shit about you. But you know, in the end, you're doing you. This is not for them. This is for the people that are struggling, that need a voice, need someone to speak up for them. So if you're doing it for them, if you're doing it for you, then it's a different thing. Great. Cool. Anything else to add along that line? Um, it is beginning. It is beginning. It is beginning. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about the, the name. Uh, I noticed the other day it was a tree FFF. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be a typo. It's supposed to be three F, and then it's yeah. I, I got carried away. It's supposed to be three, then the letter F. Three F. Yeah, but it came out three F F F. So yeah, uh, I'm probably gonna edit that out. But essentially, the name is three F, so it stands for fit to fat to fitter. So that's why this three, three is stands for three letters of the F. And not any other kind of F word. Yeah. I think that I think uh, that's my reaction when I'm gonna be uh, looking at myself in the mirror like fuck fuck fuck. <laughs> it's like shit shit shit. I'm like look at my abs. <laughs> uh, okay okay. So um, let's talk about your logo. Yeah yeah. Okay. I saw I saw your logo is really nice. Two mm -hmm. L inverted. Yes. Um, what? Who designed that logo for you? Who, who conceptualized it? Okay. Yeah. So um, what happened was. I had, a, I, had a, I had an idea of how I wanted it to look in my head but when I sketched it out on paper, it came out to be absolute shit because I have zero drawing skills. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I actually asked help from uh, one of our, one of our common fr uh, mutual friends, Gary. Uh, Gary. Oh, Gary. Yeah, yeah. So I asked him like, hey, um, could you just help me sketch this out and uh, see how it goes? So he, he was really good with the logo, I mean like he got it. Uh, initially I just wanted two of the letters, but he did it in such a way uh, that, that, we, that made the entire logo look like a sword. So I think that was pretty cool. So hats off to you Gary, thank you so much for helping me with that. Um, secondly, it goes to my brother. Um, he actually helped to refine quite a bit of stuff on the logo and also helped me with the editing of, he's actually currently helping me with uh, my intro for my YouTube uh, YouTube channel, so that's that's pretty good. So hats off to my brother. That's a crazy idea. You can totally create a hand sign. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like my girl. I don't know how he did it, but it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So and uh, I am you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, and for this particular project, if you guys are on my channel, you'll see that I actually. I took my logo and I took HP's logo and I combined them. So now that it, where the round metal, the cast iron plate, the 45 pound is, I took the words up and I put the HP logo. So now it looks like, kind of like a weapon. Like if, because the, the HP logo is a shield. Yeah. And the, the L looks like a sword. So it's like a shield and sword kind of thing going on. So it's pretty cool. I, I did, I, it didn't actually occur to me when I was, until I started editing it and then I was like, oh, that's cool. That's an insignia. Yeah, it's a shield and a sword, so it's quite cool, yeah. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so last one, just a, just a quick question on the on the words, your three favorite words. Oh, yes. So strength, patience, humility. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Uh, okay, so it's basically, I found it to be um, 
I think you should know you're helping me with this with the camera and my uh, Facebook page. Um, basically, you asked me what were the three, what were the words that most resonated with me when, uh, when I talk about myself, so when I, when I look at myself, so what is the, choose a few words that resonate with me most. So I, so I picked the three words that resonated with me the most, strength, uh, patience and humility. So these are your aspirations? Yes. Cool. So, alright, mm. that's really great. Yeah. Is, would you like to expand more on that? Uh, okay, so, well, strength obviously is the, the, it's required because of the sport I'm competing, but it is not just about strength when coming to sport, it's strength in your life, you know, like, you have to be strong, um, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually, you know, like, having strength physically isn't enough to be considered, I would say, strong. Okay, to me, when I say, when I see someone and I say he's strong, uh, most of the time he is, like, if he's a part of that, I say, yeah, he's strong, he's strong. But what, what I mean is that if you want to be a strong individual, I believe that you should be both physically, mentally, spiritually strong, you know, so that's what I mean by the word strength. Have strength in, in everything that you do, you know, in life. If you want to be, you're going to be strong in these areas. So, if someone who is mentally strong, physically strong, he's truly defined as, I think, strong. Mm. What comes to mind when you think about strength? Um, what kind of scenarios? On the top of my head, then you think 400 kilos. But, uh, honestly, if someone asks me what was my definition of strength, uh, as I said before, someone who is well balanced in all these areas. You know, if you, if you are physically strong but you're not mentally strong, someone can really tear you down mentally. Someone can just psych you out easily. You know, it doesn't matter if you can deadlift 300 kilos, but if someone can easily get in your head, he can tear you down from the inside. And that's something I believe like you can't really recover from. Like a broken bone can heal, but if someone like destroys you from the inside, then it's it's very difficult to heal from that. Because psych psychological scars take much more longer than some don't even heal. Interesting perspective. So strength in physical, mental, and spiritual. Yeah, and I'd like to add on to that. Um, the reason why I say strength is because that you know growing up, I didn't really. I'm not, I wouldn't say I had like a super super rough childhood. I just didn't have the best one, right? So a lot of things I had to do for myself. Like, you know, I was never like given handouts, you know, I was never, I had to do a lot of things by myself. I started, I had to work for my own stuff. So I started work when I was 16, uh, part-time jobs here and there, you know. I, if I wanted to buy nice things, I had to work. I had to work and I had to buy my own money. So on top of that, there were just so many other things that, so many other factors that came into play and you know, I had to be strong back then and I believe my upbringing is what made me the person I am today. I had to be strong back then and I have to be strong now and I have to be strong in the future. So throughout my journey in, in life basically, not just this project, I got to be able to build my strength in these areas. So yeah. Great. Great. Next, patience. Patience. Uh, wow. Okay, so patience is... I believe this can be applied to every aspect of your life, you know. If you, if you want something, uh, if something doesn't go your way, you gotta be patient about it, right? So, for example, uh, to, to me, I'll use myself as an example. I, I competed in my first powerlifting meet in 2015 of March. And I, in my first ever meet, I herniated three of my discs in my, my lower back. So, I got my L4, my L5, and my S1. I herniated those discs, and um, I was basically in a lot of pain. Uh, it didn't get worse until towards the end of the year, where because I didn't at the time I didn't realize that it was an injury of that extent. I brushed it off to just being a sore, sore muscles and whatnot. So as I progressively started training harder and harder, it got progressively worse and worse until to the point it got so bad that 
I coming getting out of bed was pain. Mm. Getting into the car was pain. Showering was painful. God knows what reason. Um, but throughout this whole time, the the thought of actually having to stop doing something I love was really uh, terrifying. Yeah, it was really terrifying. It was really like just dawning on me that this might be this might be it. You know, I might never be able to do something that I love. So I had received the news. I went for MRI scan. I had received it. I received the news uh, from the doctor uh, about at least. I remember it vividly. It was like a, like a exactly three days from my birthday. So I got the news then. So it's not exactly the kind of fun news you want to hear like three days before your birthday. Uh, and, the, and the doctor said that you know I have three herniated discs. One of it is degenerated. The other one is etc. 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 So basically, really not good news. So I wanted to get a second opinion. I saw a specialist. The specialist told me that I should stop doing that power lifting. Yeah, I should stop. I, I do power. I do power lifting, but the doctor referred to my sport as power weightlifting. So I found that hysterical. Um, at least, at least when he when he continued to use that word, I was somewhat in a good mood as he was talking about it. Because the throughout of the entire conversation, I was just like, "What is power weightlifting? I mean." The, it's like something I don't know about. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, the doctor told me that I, and, and this is a specialist, right? He, he tells me that I should not, I should not uh, lift, I should not do anything, basically. So, um, and, and, and I asked him, and I asked him that if it, because it was affecting my lower body, I had this really like uh, shooting pain up my left leg. So I, I asked him if, if it was okay to just train my upper body, you know, like if it's not affecting my upper body, maybe I can still bench, I can still do pull-ups, you know, I can still do a lot of things. And then his advice was to, no, you still can't bench also, uh, you can't do anything weight training related whatsoever. And then that just got pretty depressing for me. So when I say patience was that despite all these uh, consequences that can happen if I were to pursue weight training, I still did it anyway. It's, I was stubborn, I am stubborn. But when I say patience is that I didn't just jump right back in. I slowly worked my way up from my injury. I went from squatting 200 kilos pain-free to my injury, squatting an empty bar painfully. Pain I mean, it's very painful. And then now I worked my way back up again to about 240 back again. So it was, it was for me, um, that was what it meant to be patient, you know, and not just and not just with my lifting, but with everything, you know. With if you are patient uh, with certain aspects of your life, the good things will happen to you, right? Um, if you, with that being said, also is if you are impatient, bad things will happen. I mean, like the outcome can outcomes can change if you for the better if you're only willing to be more patient, you know? Just because you see your friends uh, excelling more in life, you know, they, they got a better job than you, they got a better car, they got a raise, that doesn't mean that you are falling back or that you are becoming unsuccessful. It's just that it's not your time yet. So I've, I've it, it's happened to me before, it's, it's been one point in my life where I've seen individuals of my age excel much much more further than me and I was at that time I was very I would say upset you know I would say upset I would, I would say impressed I was upset you know that why wasn't I advancing as fast as them we had the same age we had the same school but uh, eventually I remained patient I told myself that you know what just just do you study uh, work on building yourself invest in yourself and surely enough, I excelled. I excelled quite well. In fact, I did surpass. I would say surpass some of my friends that you know at the time were excelling. So either now we're at the same level, or I excelled even further than them. It's not a. I'm not meaning to brag in a sense. I'm just trying to say that uh, if I were impatient back then, I probably would not be where I am right now. So patience can can go a long way. 
Yeah, you know, very inspiring and, and you're absolutely right. This, this can be one of the stories where you ask people who are willing to drop away you know, for a single form. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 very true. I mean like those people are just you know, the term is ego lifter. Ego lifter. Some some people are open to your advice, some yeah. others are just not. Yeah. So you can't help people that don't want the They want they need some patience. Yes. And open mindedness. Ah, awesome. which brings us to the last to the last uh, word, humility. Ah, uh, so e- ego lifters are the antithesis of humility. So yeah, humility. I, I believe that humility should be there. Uh, you know, you should be humble in success, yeah. and it's it's basically like you know, you if you have strength, you have patience, but you have no humility, it doesn't mean anything. You know, I've, if you can be the greatest uh, powerlifter in the world, you can be the greatest bodybuilder in the world, you can be the greatest, you can be the richest man in the world. Right, but if you're not, um, if you don't have a single shred of humility, it doesn't matter who you are. That, that's just my personal opinion. Okay, I've I've met, I've had more respect for people who are making their way up in the in the world, like I mean, in the, the sport of powerlifting. You know, I have more respect for people that start off slow and you know they're patient, they're humble about it, and then when they reach a huge amount of success, they're still uh, humble, they still humili- uh, have humility. In, success every time they go and I have great amount of respect for those people you know because they never forgot where they came from and I've seen people that that start off just as bad and when they make it big they start being arrogant they start um, forgetting their roots you know they, they think they're the, the shit because they, they want a few stuff but I, I personally it, I have zero respect for those people and if you're one of those people then chances are I'm good I really don't have time to mix with you those people because uh, I've I've definitely had a, a lot of experiences encountering these kind of people. I've had some friends that we start off as really good friends and then once they achieve like even a shred amount of success they just they let it get to the head, you know? So how how does how does it manifest them getting into your head? I think that the when you when you get a okay for example when you make a transformation in your body, if you go from someone who's, let's just say, relatively fat, okay, in a year's time, you drop your fat, you get a six pack, you get attention from people, people start complimenting you, and then the girls start complimenting you, and then it suddenly goes to your head like, oh wow, you know, people, yeah, you know, like, girls are starting to talk to me, guys are complimenting me, you know, uh, and, and, and for some reason, it just gets to their head, you know, it's just that, they think that because these people acknowledge him that he is successful, you know? I mean like, so in, in the end, these people like let it get to the head, so they become more conceited, I guess, arrogant, things like that. So, um, humility is something I firmly believe in. It's like, I, I still, I still make it the same people uh, from my high school, you know, that, and for me, I don't have a large amount of friends. It's, it's more like, I mean, I have a large amount of friends, you know, everyone's my friend. You know, if you're nice with me, I'm nice with you. You know, you treat me well, I'll treat you well. You do right by me, I'll do right by you. Uh, I, have, I have a lot of friends, um, but only a few friends do I call, I would say, brothers or sisters. You know, uh, I like to keep my, I have, a, I have a phrase I like to tell my, my friends. Um, I like to keep my friends, my sir, I like to keep my circle small and beer cold. Circle small? Mm-hmm. Beer cold. Beer cold. Yeah. Where does the beer come from? Well, when you're chilling. When you're chilling. chilling. <coughs> when you're right, chilling with right. friends, you know, like. Uh, yeah, so that's what I mean, you know, like I've. I've uh, I started off, uh, I have. I'm a, I'm a national. Uh, national record holder. I've I've competed in both weight classes. I've won both weight classes. I've competed internationally and I've won competitions internationally as well. But you know, in the end, I when I come back home and I when I win, the next day I'm still hanging out with the same people that were there with me in the beginning when I was just starting off, and I'm still there with them 
but I but I achieve a small half success. And I'll still be and I'll still be with them that I do achieve a higher half success. I, I never forget the people that were there for me when I needed them. Great. So, yeah. so to me that's what humility means, you know. I even in success I'll never forget where I came from. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's all I guess for today. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's do this again next week. Uh right, next week. And maybe uh, next week, maybe two weeks or one week. Everyone will okay. 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 So don't forget. What uh subscribe to our channel, subscribe to HB, subscribe to Luke Lambo Powerlift here. Yeah. And uh, we will be back every week with a fresh new channel, uh, fresh new channel, fresh <laughs> new episode of 3F Project Update. You can click the link over here. I think this is you can click the link above Felix has said that's uh, HP and then maybe click the link above my head uh, for you guys. <laughs> Alright, see you guys. See you.